In the business of saving lives, time is of the essence. Emergency medical providers know that when lives hang in the balance, it is critical that patients get the treatment they need when they most need it. In the modern emergency environment, new technologies are helping caregivers do their jobs better. At Ping Medical, our mission is to give you the best possible tools for saving lives. Ping Medical has worked extensively with emergency doctors and technicians, and we understand the needs and demands of the field. Dedicated to improving emergency care and advancing emergency technology, Ping has produced the Fast One system for adult intraosseous infusion. The Fast One provides a simple and effective method for achieving vascular access for drugs and fluids. By establishing quick and reliable access to the bloodstream through the bone marrow, you will be able to administer fluids within a faster time frame and in situations in which traditional vascular access would be difficult or impossible. The Fast One has been specifically designed to withstand the pressures of emergency situations. It makes intraosseous infusion simple for the caregiver and establishes a stable, flexible infusion site that will stand up to the pressures and forces that occur while treating and transporting patients. During field testing in emergency services and hospitals around North America, the Fast One was shown to excel in rugged, awkward, and time-critical environments. The following video will give you a brief impression of the Fast One system and its use. You will learn more about how the device works, how and when the procedure should be applied, and how to deal with possible complications with the device. After watching the video, you should have a clear picture of the Fast One and how it can fit into your work. Please be aware that the following is not a standalone training video, but is part of the larger Fast One training program. To be able to safely and effectively use the device, it is essential that you get the hands-on practice and detailed information that is provided in training sessions. At the end of the video, a short instructional section for trainers on using and resetting the simulator devices is included. We hope this device will make your job easier. You'll be able to treat patients fast, and you'll find the application procedure to be ergonomic and user-friendly. It's a versatile system, usable in a wide range of ages, body types, and situations, and we hope that you will find it an indispensable tool for saving lives. We're proud to be able to provide you with a tool that can help you do your job more quickly and more effectively. This Fast One training video features an overview of the Fast One system, a real-time demo of the system in use, instructional procedures, precautions, and troubleshooting. There are two optional sections. One is a module for caregivers who will be removing the Fast One. The other, a module for trainers showing how to reuse and reset the training devices. In the first section of the video, we'll take a closer look at the function of the Fast One Introducer and how it establishes vascular access through the bone marrow. The key feature of the Fast One is the infusion tube. What the Introducer does is make it quick and simple to get the infusion tube into the patient. Once you remove the Sharps cap, you'll see a ring of needles with another in the center. The ring of needles is referred to as the bone probe cluster. During insertion, the cluster holds the device in place in the target zone. As they come to rest against the surface of the bone, they serve as a reference for the depth control mechanism. The infusion tube is mounted on the central needle called the stylet. Once the introducer is in the correct position, the operator will start pushing on the handle. This will advance the stylet and infusion tube through the tissue and bone. Once the infusion tube has reached the preset depth in the marrow, the handle will automatically disconnect from the stylet and tube. You can keep pushing on the handle, but the stylet and tube won't be pushed any deeper into the patient's bone. This design results in an extremely low chance of overpenetration. All you have to do is push down with steady force. You don't have to worry about going too far. If you use proper technique, the infusion tube will release in the right place every time. After the handle has released, the user pulls it straight back. The infusion tube will remain in the patient, and the rest of the introducer can be discarded after the needles are pushed into the foam-filled Sharps plug. 
The depth control mechanism uses the manubrium surface as measured by the bone probe cluster as a reference point and the handle releases six millimeters past the point. The device has been designed to accommodate variations in the thickness of the overlying tissue in the cortical bone, so the infusion tube will be safely placed inside the bone marrow space, even in a wide variety of body types. Another thing that should be noted about the introducer is that the user is going to supply all the force themselves. This is not an air-powered nor spring-loaded device. The force of insertion comes only from the user pushing downward on the introducer handle. During the training session, you will be able to get the feel of insertion with the SIM-IO training device. You'll also become familiar with the introducer, the infusion tube, and other accessory parts. You'll learn targeting, site stabilization, and other important aspects of the procedure. The FAST-1 is a flexible device that can be used in a wide variety of emergency situations. The FDA has approved the FAST-1 for intraosseous infusion as an alternative to intravenous access to facilitate emergency resuscitation through the use of drugs and fluids. The FAST-1 is intended for use with adults. There are no known contraindications. The device is appropriate for use in any situation that necessitates immediate access to the patient's bloodstream. Some of the most common conditions are trauma, shock, blood loss, heart attack, drug overdose, epileptic or diabetic shock, and seizures. Any time that fluid treatment is needed, the FAST-1 can provide rapid and effective access to the patient's bloodstream. The FAST-1 can be used in a huge range of conditions and environments, and it will allow access times that are much faster and more reliable than conventional IV. Studies have shown that there are problems establishing an IV line in 10 to 40 percent of cases. The FAST-1 is aimed at filling this gap and ensuring that caregivers have the capability to administer fluids to every patient. With the FAST-1, you can establish a line early and have less delay in transporting a patient. Vascular access with the FAST-1 is also extremely valuable if there is difficulty placing an IV line due to collapsed veins or trauma to the limbs. During the field trials, paramedics also found it useful as a second line to an original IV placement. With the speed and reliability of the FAST-1, emergency caregivers will have an increased capacity for saving lives with drugs and fluids. This is a real-time demo of the FAST-1 procedure. The FAST-1 is a really effective medical device and it's going to save a lot of lives. But users have to know how to use it properly, so I'm going to walk you through all the steps on this cadaver. After the decision has been made to use the FAST-1 and a packaged system has been obtained, the first step will be to undo or cut the patient's shirt to expose the sternum. You want to make sure that the clothing won't interfere with you placing the device. At this point, you should also check that there's no trauma to the sternum. Once the site has been exposed, it's important to use proper aseptic technique. 
The insertion site is located at the top of the sternum, just below the sternal notch. Ping has included alcohol and iodine prep pads for preparing the site. We use the iodine prep pad first and give the site a thorough wipe. We then use the alcohol prep pad to wipe off all the excess iodine so that the patch will stick properly. Once the site is cleaned, we're ready to start placing the device. For a successful insertion, you need to have the target patch in the correct location. Before you landmark the position of the patch, remove the top half of the backing. It's labeled 1. Use an index finger to feel the patient's sternal notch while holding the patch in your other hand. Place your finger into the notch and make sure your finger is perpendicular to the manubrium. You'll notice that if your finger is not at the right angle, you may place the patch further down the sternum or too far up the sternum. With your finger correctly aligned with the patient's notch, place the patch so that the notch in the patch is aligned with the patient's sternal notch. Push it right up against your finger. Check that the patch is aligned with the patient's sternal notch and that the target hole is directly over the patient's midline. If everything looks correct, you can press down on the top half of the patch. Then, remove the bottom half of the backing. It's labeled 2. Press down the patch securely onto the patient's chest. These tabs can be used if the patch doesn't stick properly by applying tape to hold the patch to the patient's chest. Again, the patch is critical in placing the device because it shows where to insert the infusion tube. After the patch has been put in place, verify once more that positioning is correct and that the notches match and that the target zone is directly over the patient's midline. After the patch has been placed, the insertion is ready to begin. Before you take the sharps cap off the introducer, locate the foam-filled sharps plug in the Fast One package. The plug will be used immediately after the insertion. Pick up the introducer and remove the clear sharps cap by twisting it slightly and pulling it away. Keep your hands well clear of the needles at all times. Keep the cap close by as you'll replace it later. Right before inserting the introducer, check again that the patch is correctly placed by again holding your finger at the sternal notch. Hold the introducer handle with a firm grip and place the bone probe needles into the target zone. Make sure that all the needles are within the zone. During the insertion, proper technique is very important. For the depth control mechanism to function properly, the introducer needs to be inserted perpendicular to the manubrium. When you place the needles inside the target zone, make sure that the needles and the introducer handle are at a 90 degree angle to the skin. Once you've got the angle correct, you can start pressing down. To insert the infusion tube, you need to push with a firm increasing force. Keep your wrist and your elbow in line with the introducer to make sure that the force is axial all the way through the insertion. Don't use extreme force, just push down steadily and stay in control. Don't twist or jab the device. While you're pushing down, you're pushing the infusion tube through the overlying tissue and through the bone into the marrow space. Here we go. As the infusion tube reached the correct depth, the handle separated from the tube. You heard a distinct release, and at this point, the